Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 video notes. Today we're talking about a topic in Chapter 4, Concentration of Solutions. So in order to get started, let's go ahead and define the word solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of a solute and solvent. Now, we need to obviously define what solute and solvent are. So, solute is what is being dissolved. And the solvent is what does the dissolving. So let's think about a typical solution. Pretend that you are at home and you have a craving for some lemonade. Lemonade is essentially sugar water. So you're going to take some water, you're going to put it into your cup, you're going to add some sugar, and then you're going to put that into your cup. And then you're going to mix them together and the sugar is going to dissolve. And so the sugar ends up being the solute and the solvent is the water. And you might say, why is it that we can't just say the solute is the solid and the solvent is the liquid? And that's a great question. The reason is that solutions are much more complex than that. Um, it's not always a solid that's being dissolved. For example, in the ocean acidification process, what is happening is the carbon dioxide is being dissolved in um, the water. And so a gas could be dissolved in liquid and a whole bunch of other combinations. But for our purposes, we're going to mainly talk about solids being dissolved in liquids. When we discuss this in chemistry, obviously chemists are very specific with respect to numerical values. And so we want to be able to calculate and communicate with each other exactly how much solute was dissolved in that solution. And we have a term for this. It's called molarity. Molarity, which is abbreviated with a capital M, is going to be defined as the moles of solute that are dissolved in liters of solution. Now notice that your molarity is divided by liters of solution, not liters of solvent. Because when you put that sugar in to your cup, even if you add a little bit amount, a little bit at the bottom, and then you stir it in, technically the volume of your overall solution increases with that addition. And so that's why we're dividing by liter of solution instead of um, the amount of solvent. Now we do have to be really cautious about using that lowercase, I'm sorry, uppercase M, because lowercase M means something totally different. Lowercase m stands for molality, which is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So you can see that's pretty different. In our class, we're going to focus on molarity. Let's talk about how to make a solution uh, that has this very specific um, molarity. We're going to use something called volumetric glassware, which is pictured down here. All right, so as we look at this photo off to the left, do you see this piece of glassware? One I'm going to highlight in yellow. That is called a volumetric flask. Volumetric flasks are very specific. 
And what I mean by that is you can see the super faint little line right there on the neck of the flask. When the meniscus of the solution reaches that line, what that means is we have uh, two decimal places um, of precision for that volumetric flask. So if you have a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, that means that when you reach that line, you have 250.00 milliliters of solution. That's pretty specific. So this is showing how you make a solution. So let's write out what we're seeing here in words. It's asking you to describe how you would prepare one liter of a one molar solution of NaCl. So first what you would need to do is figure out how many grams is in one mole of NaCl. So there are 58.5 grams of NaCl in one mole of NaCl. So once you have that down, then what you do is you add this to the volumetric flask. So you've masked it. And you add the solid first. Then after you add the solid, you add probably about half of the distilled water. Now, the reason we're only adding half is because then we're going to mix. So we're going to mix that until all the solid is dissolved. Then once the solid is dissolved, we can continue to fill with distilled water. Oops. Until the bottom of the meniscus hits that calibration line. Then, after that, we'll cap and invert. And when I say invert, uh, what I mean is you'll take the flask with the cap on the top over here. All right, so you'll cap it up there. And then you'll put your hand on top of the cap and you'll put your hand on the bottom of the flask and you'll kind of turn your hands so that you're inverting that flask and that just gives a final mix. So now that we know how to actually make a solution, let's do some of the math behind the creation of these solutions. Because this math up here was pretty simple. Um, we were making one liter and we were making one molar, right? And molar is just another word for molarity, which is capital M. So here's a typical molarity question. It says, what is the molarity of potassium permanganate? Uh, if your solution is prepared by dissolving however many moles um, in your 250 milliliters. So I'm going to start by writing down my equation. And my equation's pretty darn simple, right? Like, it's kind of like the density equation. So that level of simplicity. And when we look at this, you'll notice that I left off of solute and of solution. That's pretty typical. Because once we start working, people start to assume that um, everybody knows the definition of molarity so that we can kind of shorten that equation a little bit. So we're going to put in the number of moles that we were given. And 
and we're going to divide by the liters of solution and what you notice is that this is in milliliters so before we can do that division we need to turn that milliliters into liters so you can do that in your head uh, or you can do a little dimensional analysis So we go through this division. We're going to end with three sig figs because this one limited us to three sig figs. And you should get about 1.74 molar KMNO4. At this point, uh, just to be aware, you could write the capital M here like I did, or you can write moles per liter as the unit. Both are acceptable. So at this point, we are going to stop with molarity and we are going to pick up in a different video with uh, how we use molarity in regular chemistry processes. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.